All right, welcome back to Sip the Tyler Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and as you can see by the box to my left, you're right. I have a guest, another guest with me today. We got Cole Jackson from Roll Graders, and I brought him in to talk about one of his favorite subjects and one of my favorite subjects and one of the most controversial subjects for our 2024 Ravens this year, offensive line. Welcome in, Cole. I'm glad you uh, made the time to come talk to me a little bit about some offensive line play. Absolutely, Coach. Thanks for having me on. You know, I'm, I, I wish we were coming together on a more exciting topic, I guess we'll call it. Um, you know, it's it's a, it's it's fun for us to break down the film when there's um, a lot of needs for improvements because I find that's when we can really dig into the technique talk and get nitty gritty. But, uh, you know, I think this is a spot where a lot of folks were hoping for a rebuild and I'm not sure we're getting there out the gates in, right. in week one, that's for sure. So let's kind of set the scene. Um, end of 2023, uh, well, actually happened in 2024, we lose three of the five guys. We lose John Simpson, we lose Kevin Zeitler, we lose Morgan Moses. So the scene is set to, to get some younger, I think more agile guys in that situation. So my, myself, is, we're all hyped for the transition. We, we, you know, we think we're going to draft some guys, maybe get some guys in free agency. And it don't really pan out the way we think. Even though we draft a guy or two, it don't really hit the way we think it does. So what I want to do with you is kind of go down the guys that we have and what we've seen so far out of the preseason from these guys, from the guys that we think they're going to really play. We ain't going to hit the back end, guys, the guys that we think may see some action. And we can talk about positive and negative and what we saw, and uh, and we'll go from there. So it's about five or six guys we're going to hit. Um, we'll start with the two guys that we know what we got, and that's um, Ronnie and, and Tyler. And we'll hit them real quick, but then we'll get into the teeth of it with these guys that – because we don't really know who's going to start yet, those other three. And we'll get into those guys real quick. But let's start with Ronnie. And as far as Ronnie Stanley, who's probably going to be – 99% sure it's going to be the starting left tackle. Uh, what do you think you're going to get out of Ryan this year um, coming forward in 2024? I, I mean, the big thing, I tweeted this a few weeks ago, like the big thing with Ronnie is he's healthy. And mm -hmm. that is the number one, like he, the biggest indicator of his health was that he's not taking practices off. Even last year when he was playing in games, he was still taking vet days every Wednesday and, and that sort of thing. So just the fact that he's been practicing every single day, He's not sitting out anymore. He just seems to be playing consistently. Um, whether or not uh, he's not going to get back to his 2019 elite self. Like, I, I don't think that's the expectation. I don't expect that of him, but he's healthy and he's in a contract year now that he's put himself in. So I, I feel pretty excited about him. Um, I think he really fits. He's kind of that true pass protector that Todd Munkin wants with those five man protections he's going to call. So he fits the scheme really well. He also was always a better fit for his own scheme than a gap scheme. So just if I had to describe kind of the archetype of a left tackle and Todd Munkin's scheme, it would be a Ronnie Stanley type player. So with Ronnie, it's all about, can he stay healthy? When Before he hurt that knee last year, he looked comfortable. He was playing better football. Once his knee got better um, towards the end of the year, he played much better football, played well in the playoffs with the exception of that strip sack in the KC game. Obviously, that's just a bad rep. But overall, the 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 picture of his game was much better. So I'm, I'm expecting good things from Ronnie this year. And me too on my end. I think a, a healthy Ronnie will get a lot better. We probably don't get all pro Ronnie, but we'll get close to Pro Bowl Ronnie. And that's a lot better than what we've seen over the uh, past two to three years because even with him rotating him in and out of games, that really was a, that was a shell of the guy that we're used to seeing. If we get a healthy Ronnie, I think we'll be good on that left side. And even though he'll give up a play from time to time, we're going to get a lot better protection of Lamar's backside if we get a healthy Ronnie Stanley. And that's all I think we can ask for at this stage in his career. And, you know, even the, the, the restructure has shown that, you know, they kind of pulling back to see what they're going to get out of him. And he's really betting on himself to be a better version of himself with that restructure, because there's a lot of, a lot of incentives in that restructure. Yeah. And that's the thing about the restructure is he didn't have to give them as much flexibility as he did. I know a lot of people said if like, they weren't going to cut him, they weren't going to take on that dead money. So he also gave them some 
that he could earn back himself. So he is very much betting on himself, not just for a future contract, but also financially this year. So I think that just shows me he's healthy. He's practicing. He's showing up every day. He's back in it. And that's Mm -hmm. nothing but good news for the Ravens and for Lamar Jackson. All right. The the next solid guy that we can pretty much pencil in is Tyler Lindebaum, a guy who I think is, Probably, if not the the second best center in the league, the third best center in the league, and probably is looking at being all pro status this year, um, or not close to it. Um, again, with dealing with the little neck thing, but as he comes out of that, I think he's probably the the best offensive, but well not probably, he is the best offensive lineman we got. And uh, once he get over the whatever that's going on with the neck, I think he'll be back in the saddle being the leader of the offensive line and again being the best guy up there what you know what do you expect out of tyler this year yeah and that it's it's taking that next step to cement himself as an elite player i think uh even if you go back to his rookie year obviously struggled week one against quinn and williams and then kind of took off from there like it was kind of no looking back um a lot of the concerns that we had looking at his film with his functional strength and dropping his anchor and pass pro he just got better every week and he's continued to do that so it's really just you know he's 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 at that you know very good to elite step and now it's just one last step to be perennial elite um and i think he's going to take it because i think what works in his favor is this Todd Munkin scheme going in that like in zone is where he did mm-hmm. the stuff that wasn't just good. It was special, right? Like what, what he did at Iowa was special. What some of the best O-line center film I've seen watching a draft player. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't going to be able to show that type of upside with Greg Roman. He just didn't play that type of game in the run game. And uh, now that he's kind of shown that he can, anchor against the best of them the dj reader nose tackles of the world um it's really just let's get him in that zone scheme and let's you know make that let's make him you know the lead blocker on those outside zone runs get him out in space let him go out and dominate in the second level that sort of stuff so that's really what's going to take him it's it's very so it's so similar to jason kelsey's career Mm -hmm. it's you know it it was the same hurdle he needed to overcome the the same size of a player and uh what separated him from his peers was that elite run blocking. And I remember Brandon Thorne always said it best. Even if you have to give him a little bit of help and pass pro, you're going to do it because of what he does for you in the run game. So I just want to see them kind of take that last step transition to his own scheme, especially after what we saw Derek Henry do in Tennessee in a wide zone, you know, with those cutbacks over top of the center's ass. I think it just sets up so perfectly for Tyler to be that focal point in this blocking scheme. I agree. I agree hundred percent. Let's kind of get into these guys that we're now it gets fun. About. <laughs> right. And so we'll we'll start with question mark, the biggest question mark out there at six eight, three hundred and eighty pounds. Daniel Farley Lake. Um, just what did you see preseason wise? First of all, I've been saying he's a guard for at least a year and a half now. And now they finally transitioned him to being a guard. He may be the starting right guard. We don't know yet. Positives for Farlele and negatives for Farlele and, and and for the preseason. What did you see for from him? The positives are definitely what he was able to do in pass pro. I thought he was consistently coming off the ball well. Um, he 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 basically just uses his length really well in those close quarters. And even when he would get beat or get his face crossed you could see him be able to unlock that margin for error, which is his length. He's got freaky length on the Mm -hmm. inside, like stuff that you just don't see. And uh, you could see it pretty consistently, especially in that Eagles game, you know, routinely pushing guys out the back of the pocket, which is what he learned to do at tackle because he was so slow footed. Mm -hmm. Um, So I, I think that's really like, he didn't really get beat in, even if he gave up his chest, he was so girthy. And so hard to just move around that he could recover so easily. And he's so hard to move against, you know, his big matchup problem is going to be the Justin Matabikes of the world. Those quick guys that can cross his face. And if he doesn't get his hands on them, like if he was getting his hands on guys, even like Jalen Phillips in that first game or uh, Jalen Carter in that first Mm -hmm. game. Um, it was over and that's against one of the better pass rushing defensive tackles in the league. So it's all about how consistently can he get his hands on guys? It's, it's funny. And we're going to talk about Voorhees here in a minute, but they kind of have the same issue. It's all about 
how they create leverage with their hand placement and strike timing. It's just one guy has a very, very high margin for error and one has a very low margin for error due to arm length. And so I, I find that interesting. So I would say his pass pro was a pro. Like I know a lot of people are saying he's going to get Lamar killed. That wasn't the issue for me based on preseason film. Um, if you want to go back to his right tackle film or you want to project out against quicker, like you can do that. But based on his preseason film, I thought he did well in the run game. Same issue as that tackle, just too slow off the ball. Mm-hmm. He what <laughs> consistently not. Um, if he's in a combo block, he's not taking the light le- right leverage points. Like if he's squeezing a deuce block, he's he's not overtaking the inside so that the tackle can you know overtake the block and he can get into the second level. Um, some of that is quickness. Some of that just looked like poor IQ with his kind of run target. So you know, it, it, too many times guys just getting out of his blocks um, and just general quickness. Like they they had that one pin and pull where he just couldn't he wasn't fast enough to get to his guys outside shoulder. And so it's those types of things are going to limit what they're able to do, especially when we talk about Linderbaum Stanley, such a good fit for that zone scheme. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you can't, and and, and, I mean, coach, you know, this one guy can destroy your entire zone scheme. You can't, it's not like what they used to do um, with Bradley Bozeman at left guard. They just pulled them because, you know, pulling isn't, (laughs) isn't necessarily the hardest skill. Um, you just got to get to your landmark, right? So, yep. um, and all they did in 2019 was run power to the right because Bozeman couldn't move guys off the ball. So mm-hmm. they, you can't hide guys in a zone scheme, and a one bad block in a zone scheme can blow up the entire run. So I that's tweeting, my concern. tweeting a play. Um, I think from the last game they ran outside zone. Everybody was running, moving, moving guys, trying to create lanes, and he got pushed back, and his one block just. His one none block basically blew up the whole play because everybody else had moved guys and was creating a lane. And had he got any movement on his guy, I think the lane would have been there for maybe, maybe call you, maybe. But he got stood up at the line of scrimmage and I think he even got pushed back. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy how a guy that big would be so bad at run blocking, but be better at pa- you'd think it would be the opposite. You'd think, yeah. He, and it, a lot of that is quick. It, 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 it's like he can't gain leverage. It's mm-hmm. it, 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 Some of it, I honestly think, comes down. And the, I mean, it's always hard to an, assess football film and judge someone's football IQ. But that's what it seems like to me because there's just kind of consistent times where he's not putting his hands in the right places, whether it's, you know, where to put if I, if I have a – if I'm doing inside zone left and I have a four tech over top of the tackle beside me and that tackle slants in, like I just have to use my outside hand to pass him off. Mm-hmm. And yet there were times where Falele just left Rosengarten, you know, out to dry and didn't even yeah. help him. Right. Yeah. And so like, and that's going to hurt Rosengarten because that's not going to be his strength. So exactly. it's just, it, it's like poor understanding of what the run concept is and what his role is within that run concept. Mm hmm. All right, let's move on to the guy that's kind of in the battle with him and just kind of stay in that spot. And that's um, Ben Cleveland. Um, This guy, like every chance he gets to play in games, I think he does well. But when they have situations where we can't see, where our eyes are not privy to the tape, he poops the bed for some strange reason. Like I don't know if he has issues with coaching or that people just don't like him. But when we see him actually play, he does well. And that's why I always say he should have, I feel like he should have been the starting left guard last year. I feel like he should have easily been the starting right guard this year. What say you about Ben Cleveland and what you've seen? Couldn't agree more. Um, even even when he played right tackle last year, which was never a fit for his skill set, mm-hmm. it still wasn't horrible. Like it right. wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Then he comes out this year and plays center, and actually right. looks pretty darn good. So mm-hmm. now he's played four of the five offensive line spots, and you can't find me a game, except maybe one in his rookie year where he's been a liability. Like he, it, it, the 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 film is not there. Um, it just doesn't exist, especially in pass pro. His pass pro has never been bad um, at any position. So I I can't figure it out with him. Um, my, my only complaint with him is he just is missing that kind of finisher mentality mm-hmm. where he just there's too many times where a guy runs out the back of his block because he just doesn't have that. 
I'm going to put you into the dirt. And he could because he creates leverage well. I find he runs with leverage well. He maintains it. But mm -hmm. then it's like he takes two, three steps in his drive block and then kind of just, I wouldn't say gives up, but he just doesn't finish. Um, right. It's, it's kind of that simple. So I, I think that's where, you know, and I've seen a couple of reporters have kind of made opinions on it. And some people have said, you know, he's soft. And, and that's kind of, you know, I think where that's coming from is, is those plays where he just doesn't have that finisher's mentality. Right. So um, without a question, he would be in my best five for this Ravens offensive line group. Um, I tweeted it right after the draft um, that, you know, there's my old line. I got Voorhees, Linderbaum, Cleveland, Rosengarten, done. Like, yeah, that's no my more. five too. That's, that's my five. That's still my five. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the preseason changed nothing because, again, he played, even when he played left guard, he dominated everybody. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he was playing against third stringers. And right. I think that's what's been so frustrating for us the last two preseasons is we didn't get to see him against starters. We saw, I had to watch John Simpson and then, you know, now I'm watching Palele. And even last year, like Simpson was fine, but he was far from as good as I think people thought he was. Right. And I think and then Cleveland his competition had a much, was Salah. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. And that really wasn't so competition. Like, so I, I haven't been able to figure it out. It's been two years now. I feel bad for the guy. Mm -hmm. um, like if I'm the Ravens, I just cut him. I'm either starting him or I'm cutting him right. because I, like he's in a contract year now. Like go find a job somewhere where you can actually play. Like it just makes no sense. The good thing for him is, like you said a minute ago, he's played four different positions. And any game tape that you have on him is decent game tape. So he may not get a huge contract, but he'll have the opportunity to, if, you know, if if they don't play, if he don't play this year, he'll have the opportunity to play somewhere. And his agent can say, "Look, he can play four different positions, and you don't see bad game tape on him. And he could he could probably his best position may have been at center." Yeah, yeah, and, and I, one I, bad again, snap he and move people. He looked good at center. Yeah, so moved well. All right, uh, next guy, the Swiss Army knife, Pat McCarry. Pat McCarr could land a starting role this year if, if if our rookie is not ready. What do you think about Pat? So from my understanding with Pat McCarry, and I've heard he was frustrated this offseason because he wants to start. He's been doing the backup stuff. I was I'm glad you said that. I wouldn't want to be a like I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be like classified as a glorified backup. No. I, I at some point I would like, look, I want I want to start. I want to be this a guy that be This isn't basketball where your six man actually plays right. consistent minutes. Um, so I, I agree with you. And that I've heard that, you know, from a few people that are in the building that he, he wants to play. And I think the hesitancy to start him uh, over the last couple of years hasn't been from any other reason other than they're worried about his durability. There have been concerns with and, and pretty much any time he started consistent games, he's ended up getting hurt. And I think that's where the team is concerned. And that's why he's worked well in these weird rotations that they've done. Um, and so that, I mean, I, I, Jeff Zariba kind of put it out there on Twitter the other day, like they're, they're expected to rotate McCary and Rosengarten next Thursday against the Kansas city Chiefs. So I think McCary will start in terms of he plays the first drive, but I think you're also going to see Rosengarten play a few series and then they're going to see, and it, I, I kind of get it. They're going to be starting three new players, three guys at you know new positions in the NFL at Arrowhead with the crowd noise. It, it, there's a lot of sights and sounds and distractions for these guys. So if they want to lean towards getting a guy in there, first couple drives with some experience, I, I understand the perspective. But we, we've seen McCary at, at his ceiling, and it's not bad, but it's not a guy that we want to start 17 games. He's too easy to plan for. Um, and we kind of saw it. We saw him come off the bench and absolutely dominate Trey Hendrickson in the first Bengals game last year, um, like completely dominate him. And then he started again and struggled. And so it's just, I find he's kind of like that relief pitcher where he comes in and he's able to kind of, you know, throw some good innings. But if he moves into a starting role in the rotation and guys are game planning for him in the pass rush battle, they seem to be able to get the upper hand pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Now, I, the thing, the good thing about it for us, he can do all that. But just for him individually, I want, I want a guy that wants to start. I don't want a guy that's content with being that Swiss Army knife. And to hear you say that he actually does want to actually play, I, that's encouraging for me. Um, and I mentioned the rookie a minute ago, uh, and I'm very 
very encouraged with, with Rosen Gardner. His pass pro, his feet, his hand placement, his, his ability to change direction. Freaking awesome, Cole. Yeah. Like anything dealing with pass pro with Roger is 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 tech is teach tape um capabilities. His yeah. run blocking in zone is good too. It's just when we run power and he has to move, he has to do the down blocking. It's an issue. Now he can stab and hinge when we run power or counter away from him. He's good at that because his quickness. But if we run power to him and he has to do the down blocking, he ain't ready for that yet. And and it's not because he don't know what to do. He just he don't have enough bricks in his pocket to maintain blocks yet. And it kind of depends on who that guy. If he has to go up against like a a real three tech like no sorry a real one technique and that can actually and move him, he had issues. Now, if it's yeah. a maybe a five that's maybe one of those slender pass rushy finesse defensive ends, he may can fight with that person. But if yeah. he got to get down and dirty with a three or a one, he, he ain't ready for that yet. And I think it'll come with his grown man body, and he'll probably get that next year after the full maybe a nutritionist and a full NFL offseason. But right now, he just we got to be careful what we run to his side, and we got to you know pick and choose what we do with him in the run game, but. I really, I'm really encouraged with his pass pro. Like none of that, that kid is going to be special in the pass game. And, and, they, and what he lacks in run game, it'll come with age. And it's what we talked about with Ronnie Stanley. Now they have two tackles that thrive in the roles and the responsibilities that Todd Munkin is going to give them in the pass game. Todd Munkin wants to get five guys out in patterns. He wants to have five man route combinations. He doesn't want to give like, Everyone's always like, just keep Ricard in. He doesn't want to do that. Like, it's right. not his style of offense. Um, so as much as, of course, we can always, you know, use that lean back on Ricard as a 6-0 line and, and all that stuff. Max protect all those good things that we can do. But he wants two tackles that are power forwards out there just playing playing defense on the perimeter like a Draymond Green. And that's, that's what Rosengarten is for me. And so you're going to live with some of that. If anyone wants, what's the encouraging sign of Roger? in the run game it's that you know going back to that whole zone scheme transition he does fit that style of blocking that i think they want to transition to more of they got a running back that excels in it now the kind of the rest of the o-line i think fits that mold a little bit better we didn't even mention it with ben cleveland but those were always ben cleveland's best blocks Mm -hmm. um so if you start him you have five guys that i can and even andrew Voorhees, who we're going to talk about next same type of thing zone blocked well at usc it was kind of Mm -hmm. his, his better area and so he does meet, find his landmarks well. I think he 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 gains leverage well. He struggles to maintain leverage, and a lot of that is functional strength. And it's not going to come until he's on. Might have to get him on the Liver King diet. I don't know, but <laughs> lots of red meat in that boy's future. <laughs> right, and and you mentioned uh, Voorhees. So we'll go ahead and, and talk about Voorhees. I think he's locked in at left guard. Um, played most of the significant snaps in the preseason at left guard. Um, not very many bust. But there are some some final points that can that he can clean up. And I saw um, I think that was today or maybe yesterday. You talked about a lot of him reaching and like being his body positioning, his legs going one way, his hand going the other. And that's how he lose a lot of um, the reps that he do lose. But I'm encouraged with what I saw out of Voorhees. And I know we're going to have he's going to lose and there's going to be some issues with him. This basically being his rookie campaign. And um, if he's the starter, and if Rosengarten the starter, that's basically two rookies out there. And so there are some times that we gonna have some some lapses. Yep. And so you got to be ready for that. But I'm encouraged with encouraged with what I've seen from Voorhees, and I know they're going to grow with reps. Um, but as far as Voorhees, what do you think we're going to get out of him out of him in year one? Yeah, I, I was a little surprised going through his film at how much he struggled in the run game. That was something that I wasn't expecting. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of a similar issue to Rosengarten where I found he met his leverage points well, but then he would lose them a lot quicker than I kind of remember seeing on his USC film. So that was the only thing that I was surprised with. The one thing I will say is he was a true finisher. Um, when he did get guys in drive block situations, he, was, he put a couple guys in that Eagles game into the ground. So mm-hmm. that's encouraging i think that's what we want to see um a lot of this is just his first nfl action it's getting Mm -hmm. up to the game speed so in the run game he's going to get there i'm pretty confident in that um so less worried about that in the past game i i I really think this is a great example of 
a college offensive tackle that's meant to be an NFL guard because a lot of his issues are related to both hand placement and strike timing. And so Mm -hmm. he's so used to playing the edge from his time at left tackle where a lot of the time he would have to punch and stab and then kick. So he'd stab and then kick and then stab and then kick. And, you know, you saw it against uh, that cat out of Clemson, uh, Rory, uh, Rory, 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 I can never say his name with all the O's. Yeah. 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 I know you're talking about. (laughs) Yeah. So he would stab at him and he was just both times just hezzy stepping, hezzy stepping, Mm -hmm. hezzy stepping, moving his chest because he knew he was going to stab and try and kick and he would just hezzy step him and get him to throw his hands. And so what he needs to do is sit in tighter, be more patient with his hands and trust that he has the anchor and the foot quickness when guys get into his strike distance that he can land his pop and then sit into his anchor. And I think he did that. That was kind of, so I did a video on him, kind of my offensive line preview and I showed plenty of reps where he did it and he trusted it, but he didn't do it consistently. And that's going to be the growing pains that we live with. And, you know, there's going to be plays where he gets walked like he did for that sack in the Falcons game. I have Mm -hmm. no doubt about it. Um, So, you know, I know when you look at the grades and all that stuff, it didn't look good. I thought it looked a little bit better than those grades would suggest, you know, PFF hitting them with a zero in one of these games. Um, But uh, I I think he's going to get there. I do. Now, I will say this guy, I did not have any idea that I would be talking about him. Was not happy we drafted him because I'm not a fan of drafting hurt people, but he really impressed me. Uh, when I actually went back and watched his film when he was healthy and in the little bit of snaps that he got, Nick Saban. Yeah. Didn't expect to mention his name at all. And but, I mean, I was a little worried about him early in the preseason, like even game one, because they weren't playing him. And it was mm-hmm. kind of like, I know he was banged up a little bit in uh, early August, kind of before the game started. And mm-hmm. so, you know, that's when we first saw Cleveland taking those snaps at center. We heard McCary kicking in when Rosengarten was playing right tackle. So I was kind of like, oh, shit, like maybe this kid is just really not ready. And in the games, he moving looked people. like he looked like his <laughs> Michigan State self. Like, he was moving people, boy. <laughs> he was moving people and... uh and the quickness off the snap is really what, and that's what he did so well at Michigan State. He was able mm-hmm. to just be that first person hands on with a good drive to his game. So I was pretty happy with him. Um, I, I really have no worries about kind of that backup center role. I think they're pretty locked in there. I think that's a good thing too because it does allow McCary to provide some yeah, value. Guys. That's right. Yeah, Three options. Rather. I mean, you got, you got say Mac four if you want to Cleveland. Count Cleveland. No, I, I did. I'm saying yeah. say Mac. Cleveland, yeah. Macari, that's three. And who, who's the four? Linderbaum. But <laughs> I mean, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 three yeah, off yeah. the bench. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. And that gives you versatility on game day, right? And that mm-hmm. gives you a couple aces in your pocket. If you, if you, hopefully we don't need them, but if you do right. need them. So, I, I mean, I like that. I think he's got a really good chance to be active on game days, which is always a good thing for a rookie. Um, but I will say this. I pray we don't have to see him in games right. this year because I want 17 <laughs> games of Tyler. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but exactly. I completely agree with you, Coach. Like, impressed me a lot more than I was expecting, especially from I think my expectations just tanked because he wasn't getting any reps early in camp. Mm-hmm. I was like, they must not be seeing anything in his game. Kind of like I, sort of how I feel about Rasheen Ali. I know we're not talking mm-hmm. running backs, but a guy that really didn't show me anything. Um, right. That's what I was kind of expecting from Samac. It, it seemed like the, the best thing to be in camp was to be hurt and you make the team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Machine not lead TJ Tampa, but I, I, we got some other guys on there, but I don't feel like we need to talk about them at this point because they probably won't see the field. And if we, if they have to see the field, our butts are, are in deep, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, be like studying uh, Devin Leary. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so for, uh, for those that don't know Cole, where can they, they find your work in, um, uh, on all social platforms? Absolutely. So at Cole Jackson FB, always doing clips over there and road graders with Cole Jackson on YouTube. Uh, just always doing my weekly film reviews, focusing on the trench play, um, and all the other good stuff about the Ravens. And we're going to hit this thing hard starting Friday afternoon, hopefully at Saturday morning at the latest, because uh, we play Thursday a week from a week from today, actually a week from today. And uh, we'll be uh, on the grind 
him myself all 22 make sure you go check out all the film because we'll be putting it out and analyzing the good the bad and the ugly from the baltimore ravens o-line who we still don't know who's going to be yet so i appreciate you guys for coming out you could have been anywhere in the world but you chose to be here with us today not just me and we'll see you on the next one peace and love peace